A lot of times on this channel, when looking at Fallout 4 mods, it's fairly subjective. I'm highlighting specific mods that recently came out and I think are cool, special, or fit into the specific category of that video. But this time around, we are just looking at an objective metric, one that is actually somewhat hard to calculate. That with the top 10 most downloaded Fallout 4 mods of all time. Just looking at raw cumulative downloads, what mods have been downloaded more so than anything else for this game? Then you may think, well, okay, that's easy. Just go on Nexus, sort by most downloaded, and you have your list, except that's actually not the case, as there is a huge presence in the Xbox modding scene, and on Bethesda.net, a lot of those mods are broken up into several parts, having old versions as a separate page, and then newer updates or even add-ons as different pages also. So all in all, this actually took a good four or five hours to put together, as there were many mods I thought were in the top 10, but then I was like, oh yeah, what about that one? And in fact, some of the mods on this list, some of the most downloaded mods for Fallout 4 ever aren't even on Nexus, and this list overall was actually pretty shocking to me. I did not expect the outcome we got here. So again, this one, even though at first glance probably seems really easy to put together, it took a while, a lot of tabs in Chrome. So if you do enjoy the content, you can leave a like or get subscribed. I would particularly appreciate it on this one, but otherwise, let's go through Fallout 4's 10 most downloaded mods, starting with number 10, and we'll end with the single most downloaded mod of all time for Fallout 4. So when compiling this list, I was taking into consideration Nexus as well as Bethesda.net for all three platforms. Nexus, of course, being PC exclusives, Bethesda.net being PC, PS4, and Xbox One. I added that all together. And at number 10, we actually have a fairly unsurprising one, that with the full dialogue interface, that running in with around 6.2 million downloads. And this only just made the cut. Ponytail hairstyles was also at 6.2 million, but slightly less, and even enhanced blood textures was only just under this at 6.1 million downloads. Something pretty interesting about full dialogue interface is this seems to be very, very front loaded. Naturally, as you got Fallout 4 right off the bat, you did have this kind of lackluster four choice dialogue wheel. It wasn't even really a wheel and a lot of people didn't like it. It's received a ton of backlash over the years such that even in Fallout 76, they've gone away from it. Full dialogue interface is really popular because it came out so soon after the release of Fallout 4 and offered itself up as a fairly quick option to get away from that dialogue wheel. And I would actually argue out of all the mods on this list, this one is the most front loaded. As we'd see on Nexus, it has 4.6 million downloads in total on that website. But the most recent version, releasing in August of 2016, only has a million downloads. So we got 3.5 million downloads in the first eight months, but then in the subsequent four years, it only got another million. And this is really putting on full display how much larger Fallout 4's casual mod audience was back then. Next up, we have one that is still actually very popular and a staple of several users' load orders, that with True Storms. True Storms is another one that really capitalized on that initial offering. Coming out just under a month after Fallout 4 released in general, it was a definitive weather mod for Skyrim, getting an updated and in many ways improved version for Fallout 4. It offers a variety of weathers for the game that have all kinds of different effects to them, and a lot of these sounds are still some of the highest quality and best weather sounds we have to date. but even some more custom features like ghoul spawns during rad storms to a configurable degree and the ability to control weather somewhat. Although this too got pretty nice updates with nice support for some of the DLCs as those released, even some custom weathers for DLCs locations. But even with True Storms, it actually hasn't received an additional update since October of 2016, with that being the last version to go live. I think one of the big reasons this has so many downloads that it enters into that top 10 is similar to full dialogue interface. It was one of the best options right off the bat. A great quality mod for Fallout 4 that definitely has withstood the test of time. Again, many people still enjoy True Storms and have it as their essential weather mod, but now of course it has a lot more competition. It's not like it's had a ton of updates keeping it very relevant. In a way, True Storms almost has a long-term brand, with it both being widely popular for Skyrim and then being almost immediately available for Fallout 4 on release. And although it hasn't received updates in years, it's not really missing anything. The mod does just about everything you could hope for it to do. But then one mod that is on the total opposite side of the spectrum when it comes to 
to updates is our number 8 contender that with sim settlements with 6.5 million downloads. Sim settlements I feel like is one of those mods that you're really happy to see on this list and actually has by far the latest release out of every mod in this video with its initial release only being in March of 2017. Nearly every other mod came out in 2015 or early 2016 in this video so almost a full year before this one. If you're not familiar with sim settlements more or less what it does is add in little plots you could place down at your settlements that settlers will naturally build up and although that concept in and of itself the ability to quickly and easily build up towns throughout all of the commonwealth is awesome it's one of those things that just naturally fits in with the game it feels like it could be a fundamental feature or something that was always there and i wouldn't be shocked if bethesda is paying attention to the popularity of this mod when it comes to future games but one of the very unique things about sim settlements and one of the reasons it has so many downloads is it got so many updates and continues to get so many updates following the initial release we saw expansions with industrial revolution adding additional and more advanced plot types and even some additional customization or rise of the commonwealth where it took the automation to even an additional level so easily you could have just cities built at settlements with the click of a button and a signing of a leader truly making some of those otherwise irrelevant settlements feel like living cities something i think a lot of us had always hoped for sim settlements continues to get regular updates the most recent one coming in july of this year for the purposes of this download total it does include the three in one pack so those expansions are kind of included on the main page but it's not including the standalone page downloads for those expansions or even the latest expansion with conqueror which is not included in a three in one and just overall i think sim settlements is a testament to modding done right you released a mod back in 2017 and since then has just built upon it kept it relevant and continued to add new and additional features sim settlements is popular because you can quickly and easily build up cities and almost adds in a level of automation to settlement building conversely one mod that is next up on this list with actually quite a big jump in downloads from 6.5 million with sim settlements to 8.5 million with uso we do see the total opposite uso stands for unlocked settlement objects and if you're like what is this mod well you're not alone although i've seen and heard of uso in the past i had no idea it was the seventh most downloaded fallout 4 mod of all time with the core reason being the vast majority of the downloads of this mod are by ps4 users as it has almost 6 million downloads on ps4 alone more than xbox and pc combined and it's actually not even available on nexus which tends to be the main spot for users to look for pc mods but this is actually a pretty cool one as what it does is more or less add in a wide variety of additional building objects and actually has quite a few expansions or extensions to the dlcs and updates for fallout 4 even some of the creation club content so though in vanilla fallout 4 you might just have some of the typical wood walls or concrete walls with the uso it'll apply a wide variety of vanilla textures you could find throughout fallout 4's commonwealth to some of those walls and just in general the overall goal of this one is adding in a bunch of content you naturally find in fallout 4 to the settlement building system giving you a wide variety of extra things to build and even just extra customization options in a way there's so many different items or even just color options in this mod that i can't show them to you any further after downloading this you will just lag when opening the workshop menu now it's a common feature a lot of people seemingly millions of people have just put up with it because of how much content this mod adds in and it's so big on ps4 naturally because you can't get custom settlement objects. With PS4 modding for Fallout 4, there is no custom content. So if somebody builds, let's say, some cool custom sandbags, they can't be on PS4. So in a way, what this mod achieves or what it's doing is almost more impressive due to the restrictions it has around it and is one of the best options for PS4 users when you look at it in that regard. But the next up, nearly with 1 million more downloads, we do have Cheat Room coming in at 9.27 million downloads in total. So for some of you, you might also be sitting here like, what? What is Cheat Room? I guess you could kind of figure it out based off the title, but it is another one that is not on Nexus. And it's actually very simple. It adds in this new location. You can fast travel to in fallout 4 that gives you access to a lot of cheats and actually in a very easy to use manner there are rooms that just have all the armors all the weapons things like shooting galleries so you could test out that content you could find in even some god or hacked weapons along the way here one of the pretty cool features there's actually this cheat pistol that you could assign different effects to so you can make it do things like increase the size of enemies or even change different variables about whatever you shoot at with this thing and really it's kind of a simple 
simple concept. Just a bunch of cheats, a bunch of ways to mess around in Fallout 4, or even just make the game easier at times, all in one nice physical location so you don't have to worry about fiddling with menus or going through a bunch of console commands. As you could probably guess with something like this, it is really popular on consoles, not so much on PC, where again, console commands are a thing. But even still, it does almost have 300,000 downloads on Bethesda.net for PC, which is a testament to something. But otherwise, over 4 million downloads for both PC and PS4. But then ranking in at number 5, we do have CBBE, everyone's favorite mod that nobody wants to admit to using. So this is an interesting one, in that CBBE is one of the first ones on this list that doesn't really do a ton inherently. At its core, what CBBE brings to Fallout 4 is better visuals for the female body, and this is a female body exclusive. The male body is unedited. As you download this, there's a few different customization options. You could have the never nude, so you have underwear, or the more popular, I'm sure, are the nude variants, and you could have different proportions of the female body. And just in general, the skin, the textures of that person will look better. And then when using this, coupled with something like body slide, you could actually customize the female body to your liking, changing up the proportions of a wide variety of things. But technically, that functionality isn't available out of the box, as you do need body slide or even something like looks menu in tandem, which actually rank in seemingly at number 13 and 14 for most downloaded, but didn't make the cut for this video. But I think one of the real reasons CVE is so popular is how many other mods require it. As you'll find with a myriad of outfit mods, in particular on PC, CVE is the body type that is used by them. And for many of these early options, they did mandate that you also had the standalone mod installed also. And in the background, you could see just a few of the examples of this, but there are literally hundreds, if not thousands of outfit mods for Fallout 4 that do use CVE as a base. And that is an important disclaimer, as there are certain other outfit mods that use other things like UNP, which is a different, less popular body mod as a base, but some people prefer it. So overall, it really just comes down to making girls and Fallout look better and downloading a ton of outfit mods, which if you've been following the Fallout 4 modding scene, it probably isn't shocking that this is super popular. But then next up we have what I would actually say is probably the most obvious mod to appear in this video, the one that just makes the most sense, and that is the unofficial Fallout 4 patch, which I feel like I don't even really need to explain much with this one. More or less, what this does is actually patch or fix several bugs in Fallout 4, bugs that Bethesda implemented and didn't fix out themselves. A wide variety of the bugs fixed by this were there from day one, it just has patched them over time. I think some others actually came from subsequent updates or even occasionally from Creation Club, and and has addressed some of those also. And this mod actually does continue to get updates, the most recent one coming in May of 2020. I think it's pretty popular when crafting a load order for Fallout 4, you just have this one as one of the first things you always download. And that definitely is represented as it is fairly spread out, having a lot of downloads on both PC on Nexus, PC on Bethesda.net, and even Xbox on Bethesda.net. Although somewhat surprisingly, only 600,000 on PS4, which is pretty low. There are a few mods that do require you have the unofficial official Fallout 4 patch to function. That tends to be fairly rare, especially when compared to certain other mods you'll see even higher up in this video. But overall, it's a very common one, one that nearly everyone likes to have on their game, and that's why it's so popular. Nobody likes bugs. Next up, we do have Armor Smith Extended, with an insane 11.2 million downloads. This is an interesting one in that it does quite a bit, but definitely has been less popular as of late. Armor Smith Extended adds in a lot of additional functionality around armor in Fallout. Out for. Very simply, right off the bat, if you are wearing a clothing like a suit, you now can place armor atop of that. And it kind of takes that principle throughout all of the armor pieces. It applies also to other things like helmets and gas masks. So if intuitively a gas mask would fit with a helmet, with Armorsmith Extended, it does actually fit there. And it applies this to a lot of things, like necklaces and many other armor pieces, so you can actually wear a bunch of stuff at the same time. Although it definitely seems like wearing armor over outfits is one of the most popular features of this. It also adds in mod slots to a lot of different vanilla armors and even modded armors. You could apply a variety of different weaves to them and even other custom mods to outfits, which you typically can't do for many vanilla armors 
servers. It does provide color swaps. So you could have a myriad of different color options to these, which is actually pretty handy. And it does give you a whole additional level of customizing your character and making it look exactly how you want. These mod slots are a big part of this mod. And it's honestly hard to go over all of them. But one of the core concepts is if you want your character to look cool in a certain suit, but also be well protected in that suit, this mod gives you a fairly lore friendly or natural way to do so. In that you could mod it to actually be quite a bit stronger. And also it adds in a commonality in that there is a workbench where you could craft many of the vanilla armors that otherwise you may only be able to find via enemies. Now there is a consistent and easy way to actually get that if you have the materials. And even some other mods do support this and are integrated via this. And over time, it seems like several mods have actually been added to Armor Smith, which although some of those core features seem to be what really got it popular initially, a lot of people liked that it added additional functionality and customizability with armors. Over the past few years, it definitely has been less and less popular. One of the big reasons to me and just from the community seems to be like it has gotten pretty large. Now the PC download is 500 megabytes in size. This because as it just has gotten updates consistently over time or new armors added to it, the file size continued to grow also. So it definitely isn't as popular now as it once was. But in the early days of Fallout 4 modding, this one coming out just a week after the game did, it definitely was a staple and it still continues to be very popular among many players. Although next up, we may have what I would describe as the most shocking entry on this list overall, that with Cheat Terminal. It's not super crazy. We already talked about one cheat mod in this video. Why would a second one be out of the ordinary? Well, because the sheer number of downloads this freaking mod has on Xbox One. In total, Cheat Terminal has 11.5 million downloads. 10.5 million of those downloads came from Bethesda.net Xbox users. It's not even available on PS4. It also has a Nexus release, adding the additional 1 million. But as far as just the sheer number of downloads on a singular platform, I think Cheat Terminal for Xbox One has the most downloads of any Fallout 4 mod on any one platform, which is kind of crazy considering I'm sure most of us have never even heard of this one, assuming you're not an Xbox user. It's pretty simple. It just more or less adds in an inventory item that allows you to give yourself weapons, give yourself armor, make it so your shots will one shot everyone or you're invulnerable. You could add all of the perks to your character, add a certain amount of experience to your character or levels. It really does add in a lot of fun functionality of console commands, but in a much easier to use interface and a little hollow tape you could always have with you. Although it does also come with some more custom features. You can have these custom companions that you can throw down and are pretty powerful. Some of them being pretty funny or interesting. Also other things like just teleporting you directly to certain locations or even certain vendors if you want to hop around via that. And to be frank, I don't really think it's so much that this cheat mod does so much more, so much better than all the other ones. It just was one to get popular relatively quickly. It is easy in that you don't have to go to a physical location like the cheat room. You could just always have it on you. And cheating or messing around in Fallout 4 is probably something we've all done at some point. This is just the avenue many Xbox users have chosen to employ with getting there. But yeah, what a powerhouse of a mod. 10.5 million downloads is insane, especially considering the top mod of all time only has 12.9 across all four systems. Which speaking of, the most downloaded mod of all time for Fallout 4 is AWKCR, otherwise known as the Armor and Weapon Keywords Community Resource, which is actually unique in that this is the only mod on this list to have over 1 million downloads on all platforms. So what this mod does is more or less add in additional keywords for weapons and armor in Fallout 4. If you're not familiar with Fallout 4 and even with Fallout 76, a big thing is the keywords assigned to certain items. This describing their functionality and in some sense with Fallout 4, there were limited options by default. So when it came to creating an armor and trying to have it fill a specific category, there were only a select few. Hats, helmets, glasses, dog meat exclusive, or chest armor. So using the system, if you ever wanted to wear a piece of chest armor, with also an outfit that was labeled as chest armor, you couldn't because they were occupying the same slot using the same keyword. This mod extends that and actually is how we get a lot of the functionality or features of something like Armorsmith and the edits that makes. Really, the true answer as to why this has so many downloads is there are just a ocean of mods that require it. Some of your favorite weapon or armor mods have AWKCR as a dependent because they wanted to rely on or use the custom keywords this adds into the game 
while actually making their mod. And for several years, it really just became a standard. Many mods required this mod while Fallout 4 modding was kind of hitting its peak in 2017, 2018. But it's not like people are downloading this mod for a feature it adds in independently. You can't just play Fallout 4 with AWKCR and all of a sudden your game's overhauled. Technically, I guess it is on the back end, but your gameplay experience won't be any different. The reason this is so popular is because of all of the other mods using it, which is pretty interesting considering it is the single most downloaded mod of all time by over a million downloads more than number two. It is another one to get consistently updated with the most recent update coming earlier in 2020. Although there definitely has been a departure from this not used nearly as much as it once was, mainly because a lot of the keywords this adds in, although easy to use as a community resource and helpful as a community resource, many mod authors found they could actually do it themselves. An AWKCR similar to Armorsmith has gotten quite large at now 360 megabytes. Although even just in 2020, this has received over 500,000 downloads on Nexus alone. So it still is definitely a major player, a major downloaded option for the Fallout 4 modding scene, but it definitely has slowed down. The vast majority of those downloads coming in the past are coming from older mods that still require this and are still getting downloaded. That's not to say no new mods require AWKCR, but you've definitely noticed a shift in the modding scene. Overall, this video was very interesting to make, to find out what actually were the most downloaded mods of Fallout 4 ever, and in a way, kind of going down the rabbit hole of trying to figure out why. For some, it's obvious, like Sim Settlements, just lots of updates, great quality content, but for some other ones, it was a little bit more interesting and surprising to find them on this list, or find them so high up on this list. If you guys enjoyed the video, I would really appreciate a like on this one. It did take a while to make and compile just the data for this one. You would think it'd be easy, but it really isn't, as on Bethesda.net, for one reason or another, they don't actually sort mods by the most downloaded. They sort them by the most viewed, which does correlate with most downloaded, but every once in a while there'd be a surprise like three levels deep that you're like, oh, this actually has way more downloads than it should based on its view count. Either way, as always again, I thank you all for watching. Hopefully you found this video informative. Until next time, I thank you all again for watching, and I hope to see you all later.